Guys, welcome to Learn with W3 Schools. My name is Dr. Dashan, and we have been talking about XML past few weeks. So let's continue from there and let's learn about XML and XSC, uh, XSLT. Sorry about the pronunciation. I always forget that. Anyway, so in previous sessions, if you have been following along, we did talk about this XPath, COM, Parser, and HTTP requests. And I already have a detailed video covering all these XML concepts. So the links in the description below do check those videos out because it's a continuation of that. Today, the XSLT, basically, we will discuss name is dr Dishan. here for the first time again don't forget to subscribe i will be posting all these wonderful videos about xml and more about these whole concepts very soon again if you want to early access of these videos to go check out my membership page these videos you can find quickly earlier than everybody else almost a month or two months before okay so don't forget to check out the membership page let's begin so with xslt uh, you can transform an XML document into HTML. That's the key thing and the wonderful thing about this thing. XS, again, XSLT allows us to convert our XML document into HTML. That's the major beauty of this thing. Okay, so this extensible style sheet language transformation it stands for XSLT. It's a tongue twister, really. So this XSLT is basically an extensible X style sheet language transformation is a recommended style sheet language for xml so it works like an H css for html right so if you can consider that so it's but it's for xml so using this you can convert your xml document into what we call html web page wonderful right very easy very simple so how do we do that X, XSLT is more sophisticated than CSS though. See, so it is more complex, more sophisticated. With this XSLT, you can add or remove elements, attributes, or from output file. Okay, so meaning that uh, with CSS, it's only used for primarily what we call design purpose. So it cannot actually uh, add, delete HTML content. For CSS, it needs HTML content and you can need just work on that. We call it that it's more sophisticated because with this, it has this add or remove concept as well. So using XML, uh, you can create an HTML page using XSLT and this allows us to also add and remove components as well. Okay, you can also rearrange and sort elements, perform tests and make decisions about which element to hide and display and a lot more. So there's many things that goes inside it. XSLT uses XPath to find information in an XML document. So it's quite important and essential that you understand what XPath is because this XSLT will use XPath to find information. We have talked briefly about XPath already in my previous video and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth. A whole full course of XPath is about to be released hopefully by next month. And if you want early access, again, do check out the membership page. You can find the video already there. Now, let's try to do this example of XM, XSLT. So we will use the following XML document. Again, a standard XML document we have in which we have a root menu called breakfast menu. We have an element called food and it contains various different sub elements. Again, food, food, food. So we have a breakfast menu and it contains various different XML elements. Now the task is to convert this into what we call an HTML. To do that, we use XLT to transform the XML into HTML before it is displayed to the browser. So before it's sent to the browser, actually we need to convert it into HTML. Otherwise, it's going to just render the same XML file. So to ensure that it's displayed as an XML uh, into an HTML, we need to convert it using this XLT style sheet. Now do note that just like CSS, this is also referred to as sometimes an XML style sheet or generally XML CSS as well in the general terms as we call it. But but again, this is XLT, a form of uh, style sheet for XML. Now, what we do in this one is, again, we have a standard XML and we wrote the HTML, XSL version 1.0, XMLNS, XL metadata, so we transform. So we provide the metadata within the HTML tag, letting it know that which XSL version we are using. Again, extend this XSL. And then, so we define body. Again, now here is our standard CSS. So this is a standard CSS code. Okay, so for XSL, we for each select breakfast menu food. So now here the XSL code starts. This is saying that uh, if I just delete this so that I can rewrite it. So here is our extended XSL code. What this is doing is that it says for each select breakfast menu food item. Now, within the first line, we are telling that I am using the XSL colon for each is the loop that we use. Again, in XML, they, we have just the structure, but using XSL, it because it's more powerful, it's able to transfer, uh, transverse, and uh, transform various different elements within XML. So we are using loops to do that. 
So we are using loops to traverse each element. That way, with a small piece of code, we can completely traverse a very long XML document as well. So this for each is a loop that will traverse through each element. Okay, so we say select breakfast menu food. What does the breakfast menu is? So if you check the breakfast menu inside this, you will find that we have food, but before the food, we have the root element called breakfast menu. So this breakfast menu root element has been specified. Inside of this, we have a food element. So idea is go inside the breakfast menu. Inside this, you will find an element called food. Uh, inside food, there are various different tags. Okay, but first we need to access the root, then the main tags that are basically repeating, which is the food, 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 food item. So here's exactly what we're doing. We say, hey, inside go use the XSL, use the for each loop that exists inside this body. Select is equals to select again is an attribute that we use with this XSL, and we specify that there is a breakfast root menu inside with this a food menu. Now, once you read this element, what do I need to do? So we use the div again now HTML style background and uh, background color the color for the font color and the padding white now this is again pure css so we are again using the html tag so this becomes our html this is our again inline css we use okay so this is again css this is html and this is what we call x s l t okay so see this how multiple language frameworks are combined together to create an output that's the beauty of this xml okay you want to learn more about html my video is already on the channel you can find all about html and as well as css my detailed courses are on this channel find that out okay so span style font weight board blah 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 things this is again whole html code this is again where the xslt starts so how the mixture is there how we combine html with xml xls xsl is a wonderful feature that you need to follow so now here what we're saying is that in xsl colon value of now value of is again another function that is used to traverse the elements inside our food so we say select name and then we xsl value of select price and div close so now we're going to print all these things together so we're going to say div paragraph xsl value of description span and then again use whatever way you want to present it again xsl value of select calories so now here are four main things that are basically being used each food item has value of name one thing then it has a value of price second thing then it has a value of description third thing then it's a value of calories okay so this four thing all these four are actually child of what we call this thing so if you note here okay every breakfast menu has a food item inside it okay inside the food items you would find name we have a price we have a description and we have something called calories so these four sub tags are there now using xsl we can access these four items in our code using this xsl value of function so xsl value of select is equals to calories xsl value of select name xsl value of select description and xsl value of select price but this basically is using for each loop to traverse the all the food items so what's happening now is again that we are going into food item and then we are using these names here description description and calories so we are traversing these names inside the food item so this can have five foods this can have 5000 foods the code will be basically the same and we can traverse it to view the output see this is the beautiful output that we get so now the xml document is quite simple quite straightforward but traversing it using xpath and xslt logic we basically are able to convert this entire document into a wonderful output and this again depends on the css how you want to define it how you want to use it so it's actually all up to you how you going to process it so this is what how our xslt works in a simple sense you want to learn the complete tutorial of xslt again i have already made one of these tutorials you can find get an early access by going into youtube membership for me okay so become a member support me and get tutorials and description very quickly this is dr shan signing off